this is Hello, boys and girls. Welcome to the Claywright Workshop. Have I got something really neat for you today? Today, I'm going to teach you how to do catfish. It's a combination of a cat's face and a fish's body, so it makes it a catfish. Now, we're going to use some of the techniques that I've taught you in some of our other previous shows. And as usual, this is going to be so easy, it's either going to make you very happy, wow, thank you, Joe, for teaching me that, or sometimes it makes people angry. Why didn't somebody tell me this before? I've always wanted to do this. Okay, now there's a bunch of them here on the table, a whole coven of kittens, as it were. And every time we do one, my wife and I, she does a lot of the painting. Sometimes we'll use a fish color, as you see here, and sometimes we'll use the more realistic cat colors, as you see here. Now, when you fire the clay that we use, I use a clay called white earthenware. It comes out snow white, just as clear as my conscience. I think I have one down here that has uh, been fired and has just come out of the kiln. So when you get this, it'll come out snow white. But we're going to start at the beginning, which is the very best place to start. Now, I said that not to be funny or make a joke, but most of my students are right brain people, and they think out of sequence. They eat their dessert first. You know, they'll get out of the shower, put on the necktie, and try to put a suit on. The way the right hemisphere of the brain is wired, it jumps like a frog on a, with hemorrhoids on a hot rock. And they don't do things necessarily in sequence. Well, today we're going to do it in sequence. On making a catfish, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a platform for the cat to be on. So I'm just going to make a rock. All right? Then we're going to make, as usual, we're going to start out just like in math with the whole numbers, like $156.37. So the first thing I'm going to make is the primary shape, which is going to be an egg shape. And then I'm going to taper one end of the egg shape. And I'm going to make the tail. At the same time, I'm going to squeeze it and put a fin on the top edge. That's the number one primary shape. Then I'm going to do number two, the secondary shapes, which in this situation is going to be a couple of ears, and I'm going to do some fins, and they'll work kind of like training wheels to hold the cat onto the rock. Then I'm going to do number three, the details. Details we do last. And that was the joke that I made earlier. If I were a cook and I said, today, boys and girls, I'm going to teach you how to make a chocolate cake, a birthday cake. And I'm going to go, yay. And when I reach for the cookbook, which is the map here, and I begin to reach for my tools, which would be sifters and spatulas and whatever, and I reach for my ingredients, which would be flour and water and eggs, I would look up and half my class are holding lit matches because they're ready to light the candles on the cake and I haven't started yet. And emotionally, you jump ahead. So we're going to try to do this in order. First are the major shapes, M-A-J-O-R, my dyslexia works. Second is the minor shapes, M-I-N-O-R. And last is detail. So let's get going, OK? The first thing we do is a rock. You'll notice that the, all of the catfish we have today are up on a rock that allows us to have these pretty fins. So we're going to start in the beginning. As usual, I'm using my favorite type of clay. It comes in these 25-pound bags. Two 25-pound bags come in a box that weighs 50 pounds. It's very, it's already been de-aired and pugged, and it's ready to rock and roll. Now, I'm going to grab a small amount of clay here. And I'm going to make it hollow. Nothing you see before you, any of these cat here or the frogs that we did before, nothing is ever thicker than a slice of white bread, the technique I use. Now, there's a rock, but it's hollow on the inside, all right, just like a cheerleader's head. All right, so now we turn this around. We turn it inside out. I think Thomas Jefferson said John Adams' soul was so pure that if you turn him inside out, he'd still be white. Okay, here we go. There 
is a rock. That's pretty easy, right? That's my nickname. Okay. That's a rock. That's the hardest thing we're going to do. That's it. Now, I'm not much into exact measurements, but obviously by the fish that you see in front of you today, they're from this small size here up into the larger size here. And I work with a lot of students. I work with homeschoolers and scouts and parochial schools, whoever calls me and wants me to do a little show off trick. You notice the size. The amount of clay that I start with will determine how big my fish is going to be. And that may not seem too difficult, but there are people that aren't mathematically oriented, okay? I worked at a shoe store once, and women would come in, I would measure their foot. Uh, Ma'am, you've got a size seven foot. She said, okay, bring me some good sixes. And I just, she didn't quite have the gift for math. Here we go. Here comes the catfish body. I'm going to roll this clay, and I'm going to make it a cylinder. All right? I'm using the palms of my hands. I never really push down on this. I'm pushing over it. Okay? Now... This is a solid cylinder, okay? Now I'm going to use this tool here. This is called the proctology stick. It goes right up the bottom, and it comes out the other end. It's a shish kebab, if you will. Now I'm going to roll it, and I'm putting equal pressure on both ends, so I'm making a hollow tube. We're going to turn this into a pinch pot very shortly, okay? Now, if you look through this cylinder here, you should be able to see all the way through it, and you'll see something very strange. Because I'm looking through it, and I sure see a lot of strange things. I don't know why that is. Okay. Now, <laughs> oh, my God, really strange. Okay. Now, I'm going to close up this so we trap the air inside. All right? We want this to be full of air, like your grandfather after Thanksgiving dinner, just totally full of air, okay? Now we close up the other end. We've trapped the air inside. Now this is not a lead zeppelin, but this is a clay balloon. Now you'll notice intentionally one in fat and one in skinny, like a teardrop, boo-hoo-hoo, right? Or a blind date or your first wife. Okay, now Taper this end so there's a big difference. You see that? Now you can already begin to see the basic shape, the major shape that I showed you here, okay? Now I'm going to press it on this end. Just press down, and there's a tail. Isn't that neat? Okay. Now I've got a tool here which is basically just a broom handle with a point on one end, and I've made some shredded marks on the other end. And these shreds on there, they look like a redneck eating corn, just all these irregular. I'm going to go like this. I hope we can get this close enough. And it makes this wonderful texture. You guys see that? Now I'm going to put it on the other side. Remember, this is not like an argument with a Democrat. It does have two sides. So now I'm going to check it out. Great fish tail. Isn't that weird? Now I'm going to put the fin which is on top. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to squeeze this top edge in between my hand, palms actually, and I've put a fin on top. Is that way cool or what? Could that have been any easier? Even men can do this. I'm telling you, it's simple. So now, using the same stick that I prepared, and I just took my pocket knife before they've been outlawed, and I took my pocket knife and just put a few scratches here, okay? I'm just waiting for the next legislation. They're going to outlaw blunt instruments. Okay, here we go. So before all of my tools are outlawed, I'm going to use them. There are the striation marks. <laughs> this is cool a lot. We've done the major shapes. Now, we've learned many times when you put clay together, you score. I'm scratching that up. I'm going to scratch the little belly right here. And I'm going to put a little water on it. 
The water works like glue. So now, as you can tell, I've got the water on it. I may even, I'm gonna raise this up so y'all can perhaps see me better. Let's see if this will work. Kind of make a makeshift platform here. All right. <laughs> this water is slippery. When water and clay come together, it makes a substance known as slip. Okay, we are looking good. Now, as we mentioned, that takes care of the major shapes. Now we're going to move to the minor shapes. All right? We're going to do some math again. I read once, I took philosophy in college because I wanted to make sure I was unemployable when I graduated. And um, there were no good philosophy jobs when I graduated, so I had to go back to college, get another degree. And I found out that philosophy in ancient Greek was based off math. You had to study math before you could study logic, before you could study philosophy, because logic and philosophy were based off math. Isn't that interesting or boring? Okay, now, I'm going to take my politically correct knife here, and I'm going to cut this in half. All right, and now I'm going to cut it in half again. So now we'll have five equal parts, right? Okay. No, I think four. I'm not good at math. Yeah. said I took math. I didn't say I was good at it. All right. Now, this gets real easy. I'm going to roll a ball, just like I was going to make a snowball to throw at a preacher. See how easy that is? Now, one end skinny and one end fat. Grab it by the top and the bottom and go down like that. I'll do it some again. Roll it. One end skinny, one end fat. Grab it by the top and the bottom, down like that. When I'm teaching scout troops and homeschoolers and I show them this, they always miss the table and hit me. It's just amazing. There we go. Now, I want this to be flat because these are going to be the fins on the side. One in skinny, one in flat, fat. Grab the top and bottom, down like that. Now, using the stick that I've prepared, I roll right across the fat end. I don't think fat's pretty correct anymore. Okay, they've outlawed my weapon. Now they're gonna outlaw my vocabulary. All right, I'm an outlaw. <clears throat> okay, that's a fin. This will be called politically incorrect art. You get to use words and tools, which will be politically incorrect pretty soon. Okay, here we go. Now these, that's how simple it is. And I kind of radiate like the hands on a clock swinging, so it fans out. Now, I did some research on fish, and the fin on top is the dorsal fin, and the fin here by the chest is the pectoral fin, and the fin in the back is the uh, anal fin, so they actually have names. Okay, now here we go with water again. Water working like glue and I put on the fins. Now this is connected to the rock and it's gonna make it more fish-like, all right? Now art is like income tax. You just make it up as you go along and no matter what you do, somebody will run up and say, that's illegal in this state or it's a genius. All right, there we go. Now, if I spin this guy around, he has two sides. This is a Republican fish. He swims to the right. There we go. Was that easy or what? Oh, it'll take two minutes? Okay. So now we've done the major shape, the minor shapes. Whew. This next part is so cool. Now, my wife taught me this. I'm real proud of her, and I'm going to show you guys how to do it. We're going to do the face. And the face has a little math also, so I'm going to show you the, the math separately here. The face here is basically round. You follow that? Now, the one neat thing about a cat is his nose is in the middle, like bullseye, bang. You see the nose in the middle? Okay, let's do our math again. Coming out of the middle, we're going to divide this face into thirds. You follow that? One, two, three parts. See how easy that is? Now, the eyes line up 
and they're halfway between the nose and the top. The ears are lined up here on the top. The cat has two round balls right under his nose, then a lip. And what I'm going to do, and you'll see it later, I'm going to go back and make the face just a little bit fatter. There are the whiskers. All right, was that simple enough? Divide it in thirds. All right, if I get a chance, I'll make one of these um, separately, and it's kind of like this. Here's another demonstration. The nose is in the center. The eye and ear are on a straight plane like that between the uh, ear, eyes, nose. They all line up. They all line up. There's a lower third, the balls on both sides, and the lip. All right, so that's what I'm fixing to do on the face here, except I'm going to get that joy of dyslexia, and I'm going to try to do it so it's facing you. So bear in mind, I'm working upside down and backwards. So it may be a strange fish when we're through. All right, here I go. I'm going to try to find the center. Bear in mind, I'm upside down. Is that my center? Okay, is that my center? All right, now... I'm going to line up. The ears will be up here. Here come the ears. We already know this trick. If you, need, if you need two things the same size, you roll a ball, tear it in two so you end up with two equal balls. That's a good way to end up, okay? One end skinny, one end fat. Grab the top and bottom, down like that. One end skinny, one end fat. Grab the top and bottom, down like that. Now, I'm going to score. A lot of times, and I mentioned earlier about people getting out of sequence because they're in too big a hurry to be organized, okay? So I can't forget, and I'm kind of like the doctor that catches all the diseases that his patients have. I tend to catch all the diseases that my students have. Um, most of my students are either young children or women, so this is why you see the personality before you today. All right being trapped in a small room full of women and children for 30 years may have affected me. All right. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. grab this bad boy by the toe. See this? See how I'm grabbing it? All right. You have to be very careful how you grab things. Believe me, my trial comes up Wednesday. Okay, here I go. I push down so it's flat on the bottom. Then I put it right there. Bam! Is that cool or what? I'll do it some again. All right, just too easy. Here we go. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. catch it by the toe. Got it right in the middle, push down so it's flat on the bottom. Flat bottoms are very attractive. They're in this season. Friend told me that. Got the slip. Look at there. See the ears? Everything's where it should be. All right. There are the ears. All right. Got the rock and roll. There's the nose. Here come the eyes. I'm going to use my thumb, my favorite tool. There's the eye. Move those ears back a little bit. Okay. Now, the balls go right up under the nose. We already know this trick, you guys are veterans. Roll a ball, tear it in two, two equal balls, throw it down so it's got the flat back sides. We know how we love the flat bottoms, right? Okay, flat bottom girls. Here we go. Where's my water? Got to use a little water. There are the balls under the nose. Are we looking good, guys? Are we getting there? Is it working? All right. We'll give this guy some attitude. If you've ever known a cat without attitude, write in and let me know. Okay. Here we go. There is the lower lip. Was that easy or what? How are we looking? Now we're going to give him those really cute fat cheeks. All right. We know to score and slip. We know to roll a ball, like you can make a snowball to throw at a teacher, okay? Tear it in the middle so you end up with two equal balls. Flat bottoms, flat bottom girls. Here we go. Now, score, score. I've already slipped. And here are the nice fat cheeks. Oh man, this is kicking. This is looking good. Isn't this amazingly easy? 
It's just a little simple math, a little simple logic, okay? Now, if I do this right, you're going to be impressed. And I'm overdue to do it right. I'm going to use my thumb again. I'm going to go right to the edge of that cheek and push up. Hot dang a greasy bear. Look at that. It makes a perfect eyelid. Do it some again, okay? Go right to that fat cheek, push up, and it makes a perfect little eyelid. Look at that. Now, I'm going to take this pen and I'm going to give it whiskers or freckles or acne, depending on the age of the kitty cat. Can we see this? Okay. Now, we know how to give it eyes. Roll a ball. Tear it in two. Put a little water in there. Drop in the eyes. Remember, the eyes go into the socket. Now, if we have time, the edge of that eyelid is what gives it most of the personality, okay? The corners of the lips and the edge of the eyelid. So what I'm going to do, you're going to have to watch right here really close because this is tricky. Here I come. I'm going to roll a coil, throw it down, cut it in two so I have two equal pieces. Guys, I am working upside down backwards. So that is my excuse. I always like to have a good excuse. Okay, here comes the eyelid. Go to the edge of the nose. And if the eyelid is up, he'll be surprised. Woo! Hello, boys and girls. And if you're down, he'll be mean. The eyelid is what gives it most of its personality. Okay? We've been saving up. We're going to buy my brother a personality for Christmas. He's always wanted one. Okay. I don't think they make them in his size, so let me see. Now, watch. If the eyelids come down, does that change him a little bit? Okay. Here we go. <laughs> I like it. And I've got another tool that I've prepared in advance, and I've done my best to lose. I have a gift for losing things. I hide in plain sight. Here we go. I've got a hollow ball in the end. It's about the size of my fingertip, so I'm going to push right there. I was doing research uh, about cats, and uh, I like to, uh, one of my favorite books to uh, read, it's a bestseller, uh, it's called the Bible, and um, I found out that in the Bible, cats are the only domestic animal not mentioned. Is that way cool or what? I've often wondered about that, okay? The other thing I found out is Dogs and cats are very different, kind of like men and women and so forth, liberals and conservatives. And the way you can tell, because dogs have owners and cats have staff. The other thing somebody told me that if you go to the pound and you want to save a dog's life, because you're a good person and everything, and you buy a dog, you bring it home, you give it a bath, you give it something to eat, give it a warm place to sleep, the dog will look up to you and go, you must be a god. You buy a cat, save his life, bring it home, give it a bath, something to eat, a warm place to sleep. The cat looks up at you and go, I must be a god. Right? So that's kind of the difference. Okay, now the same tool that I used earlier that has the striation marks in it, I'm going to come right here and I'm going to make a semicircle around the edge of the cheek. I'll do it again from this side. Remember, this is not an argument with my mother. It does have two sides. I'm going to go right here, and these are the fins, or the gills, if you will. Now, the beauty of making a catfish, and by the way, a catfish is an interesting animal. In the Mississippi Delta, them bad boys get to weigh 300 pounds. That's a big freaking fish, okay? So they're not just like the little local ones here. They can, right here at Duke Power in Charlotte, they have uh, fish down at the base of the dam that are as big as men. I've heard the skin divers tell me that. I'm not going to go looking for them. Now, I'm going to give it the little uh, pectoral fin now. It's a relatively small fin. That's the one on the side of the fish that you see it breathing and doing that with. I'm going to roll a ball, tear it in two, one in skinny, one in fat, grab the top and bottom, down like that. It is amazing when I have a large class of, let's say, homeschoolers, and I show them how to grab this and throw it at the table. There's 10 kids in the group. Nine of them hit me. I don't know why that is. I guess they can't throw well. All right, here we go. 
There's the fin. That do the little clock thing where the clock goes around like that. So it's got a little movement. Again, I must remember to use water. I had a cousin that used to hide his money under the soap. Nobody in his house would ever think to look there. So here we go. Here comes the fin. It goes right on the edge. Hey, this guy's looking pretty good. Okay, now put a little movement to it like that, see? I'll spin it around again on my makeshift turntable. I have a 25 pound turntable here. Luckily, my heart is pure and that gives me the strength of 10 men. That's a small advantage of having a clear conscience. All righty, that is looking good. Now, again, this fish is kind of rigid so I want to give it a little movement, right? So it looks, doesn't look like Egyptian and really stiff. So your personality will fit into your work, and this is very stiff. So I'm going to give it a little hitch in the giddy up, like a cheerleader walking. Okay, so I'm going to spin the tail that way. That looks better already. And now I'm going to lift the head up. There's some attitude working, okay? Maybe bring one ear up and one ear down. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw him. This guy's pretty cool. Okay. Now, uh, this clay shrinks 10% when it dries. So it'll be 10% smaller. That's about average for clay. It shrinks 5 or 6% when it's drying, another 5 or 6% in the kiln. So this will be about 10% smaller. When I'm making these, some people like something small and cute, kind of cuddly they can hold in their hands. And then other people that have large egos, such as moi, they like to have things bigger. You'll notice here on the fish, the gills, you saw me do this. We did this in 15 to 20 minutes, right? It doesn't take long. You can get as realistic with the paint job, like real cats come in the uh, many colors, the black and the white and the gray and the tabby and the shabby and the chic and whatever. So when you go to color these, remind, remember, when it comes out of the kiln, and this clay is fired to 2,000 degrees, that's cone 0406. If you want to know how hot 2,000 degrees is, that's hotter than Georgia asphalt when you're barefooted. That's pretty hot. And the clay will come out snow white, just like my conscience. And it's just like painting on a canvas. Uh, since it's only fired to 2,000 degrees, and porcelain is 2,300 it absorbs